has added one of the most insane lenses to the RF lineup that is a thousand dollars cheaper than the 85 f 1.2. In today's review of Canon's brand new beautiful lens, the 135 f 1.8 image stabilized lens, I want to give you 10 reasons why you should consider using this lens or not consider using it as well. So let's start off with reason number one. This lens completely obliterates the background. If you're in a bad environment, if you're in a bad location, or if you just want to completely isolate your subject, this is the lens to use. Not only does it go down to f 1.8, but it just really melts the background away in such a beautiful way. On top of that, if you're in a place with a lot of beautiful colors and you want that professional, beautiful focus on your subject, the 135 is going to be perfect for that. Reason number two, this one has a minimum focusing distance of 2.3 feet. The 85 has a minimum of 2.7 feet. Now you may not think that that 0.4 feet may make much of a difference, but it really does. Any amount of distance that can close the gap, especially for a prime lens with this focal length, any prime lens that can do that is going to be a plus because it's going to prevent you from switching out to different lenses. It's going to save you time. Plus it's going to give you more options and flexibility to compose. This is actually one main reason why I got rid of the 85. Look, the 85, I know I raved about it in my past video. I still love that lens, but it was, there was so many little situations when I could use that lens to its fullest extent that it just became so niche and I didn't use it as often as I would have. And that's why I switched over to the 28 to 70 to fill in that gap. But with the 2.3 feet here, it makes it that, so that way I have so many more options to play with, with the 135. Reason number three. Now I haven't seen any other reviewer mention this yet, especially prior to me buying this lens, but this lens is something interesting and it's not necessarily bad. I kind of like it, but there's this warping effect that happens behind your subject. So in this photo, obviously Alyssa looks amazing, but behind her, you see this kind of circular arc shape in the lemon trees. It's kind of crazy how this lens is tack sharp on Alyssa. It also renders her beautifully. But if you look behind her to the lemon trees, they all look kind of wrapped around her. For me, I think it looks really cool. And honestly, I feel like it's super unique because I haven't seen any other lens that does something like this. This effect doesn't happen all the time. I feel like it happens more often if you have a lot of patterns like really close to your subject that are maybe about five to seven feet away but I don't mind it at all, but is it is something that you should be aware of before getting this lens. Reason number four. Now I saw in Peter McKinnon's video, how this lens amplifies the background. It makes the landscape behind your subject look bigger than normal. Like it's weird. This lens makes me want to go out and shoot. And even if with the whole warping effect, I honestly shouldn't call it warping because it's not really warping. It's more so like turning the background a little more circular, like that pattern in the lemon trees combined with how it just amplifies the landscape and makes everything look bigger behind the subject. It makes such a unique look that I really, really love. So this is a dry riverbed. And if you look at the trees and the river plants that you see at every lake, I don't have no idea what they're called. They look magical. And at the same time, they don't take away from Melissa, who is of course our subject. Okay. Reason number five, continuing on with this hype train of how much I love this lens. This one captures some insane detail at so far away, which is really surprising. From so far away, you can see all these bugs, this pollen, all of this random dust in the, in the air. And you can even see all the little fuzz on Alyssa's sweater. Hear me out on this. I know this is going to sound a little stretched, a little, little far fetched. Okay. But it's as if this lens was the 100 millimeter macro F 2.8 combined with the 85. You get the details, the intricate details with the macro lens. At the same time, you also get that rendering shape, that beautiful, delicious bokeh with the 85. I feel like the 135 is a combination of the effects from the 100 and 85. Okay. If you're enjoying this video so far, please subscribe to the channel. We are this close to 1000 for this photography YouTube channel. So please help me get there and let's continue on to reason number six, which is this manual button. So this manual button, I honestly could care less about when it first came out until I started using it and it's amazing. So there are two buttons on the side, one's on top and one is on the left side. You can program these buttons to anything you want on default. When you press this button, it stops autofocus and it holds on to a manual focus, which I think is going to come in super handy when I use this for video. I am a wedding photographer and product photographer, but I also shoot a ton of video for commercial work. And this is why this little button here is going to come in handy for shifting it to manual focus, especially when this is on a gimbal. And on top of that, I also saw in Vanessa Joy's video, she programmed this beautifully too, because she put this onto like a digital zoom, which I can see myself using as well in photo mode. 
it seems like Canon is adding a whole bunch of other functionality to the lens themselves, which I'm totally for. I love this control ring. And now we have the flexibility of adding two more buttons on the lens. I'm here for that. Okay, now speaking of buttons and switches and stuff on this lens, this lens also is image stabilized. Yes, thank goodness, because 85 was not image stabilized. Again, another reason why I got rid of it as well, because the 20 to 70 is image stabilized. And in this case, this one too also fills in that gap, which means you can use it for video as well. Or if you're shooting in a lower light, you can go to a lower shutter speed, let it more light by having this image stabilized and getting a more focused image for that. So image stabilized lens, a definite plus. Reason number eight, I mentioned this in the very, very beginning, but this lens, yes, it is expensive. All the RF lenses are super expensive. This one is at $2,000, but it is $1,000 cheaper than the 85, which is a huge, huge plus. I was actually expecting this to be like 2,700, 3,000, but I am so glad that this one was $1,000 cheaper at $2,000. Again, by no means is this cheap, but it is cheaper than the 85. And for me, that was a plus. Okay, reason number nine, two reasons left for you. Reason number nine, this one has a really fast autofocusing system, but there is a little whirring, a little humming. You should definitely take note of that if you are planning to record some video for this that you will likely hear the motor. But at the same time, this one, the autofocus speed on this lens is lightning fast. If you've ever used the 100 millimeter macro, you know how long that thing takes to hunt. It takes forever and a day to hunt. And that one's also at F 2.8. This one is at F 1.8. And this one being at 1.8 barely hunts at all. It is lightning fast. Okay, number 10, last one for you today. I love shooting through a lot of foreground elements. For instance, for this photo, I was shooting through like four or five branches and a bunch of leaves. As I'm focusing on Alyssa and this lens did not struggle at all to find her. It blows my mind how tack sharp Alyssa is because normally a lens like this would be hunting through all the details in front of it. It would like try to go through all the branches and the leaves and it would just be super out of focus for a long time. But yeah, that wasn't a problem at all. So those are my 10 reasons why I think you should totally consider this 135 for your next lens in your toolkit. I absolutely love this lens. I can't wait to use it even more. Um, I hope you enjoyed all the image samples from today because they were from a portrait session that I did with Lissa yesterday. Went to a local park with a lot of foresty looking trees. Also got some urban urban style shots, which I never do. Typically my shots are very, my style is very like light, airy. So it was also pretty fun to flex that creative muscle and try something completely different and try out a whole urban style too. Um, thank you, a huge thank you to Alyssa for being down for yet another photo shoot with me. But yeah, if you have any questions about the 135, I'll be more than happy to answer them in the comments below. Let me know what you all think about this brand new lens that Canon is or just has released. And if you're planning to get it as well. I feel like for me now in 2023, my toolkit, which I would love to do a video on, my toolkit is like the 20 to 70 and the 1535 and the 135. Those would be like my, my holy trinity of lenses for this year. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful in some way. If you did, I'm glad. And I will see you all in the next one.